Hey guys, Mac again. It's October 30th, and we're almost done with this shiznick. Looking forward to that, but I'm going to be so excited when it's done that I did it. It'll feel an accomplishment that hopefully I'll write off of for a little while, months to come, maybe the whole year, <laughs> until the next October, hopefully, and I'll do it again, and better next time, and I'll be more prepared, hopefully, I don't know, who knows. But I want to talk about another movie, kind of give a nod to another movie that I haven't watched for a while. I was thinking about doing this the other day when I did the From Dust Till Dawn. And that is going to be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake of 2003. Now, I saw this before I saw the original, and this is the only one that I own. But I do love the original. I think there's actually a Criterion collection of the original. Or there's some kind of special Blu-ray or something. I could be wrong, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd like to get that Criterion, but I'm glad that I own this. Like I said, I love both of them, but this was my first experience with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I think it's pretty close to the original, somewhat, but, I mean, they did add and change things, and maybe for the better in some ways. I think some people are conflicted about which is better, that this might actually be better than the original, but... They're both so good, it's it's hard to say, because, you know, the original was the original, and it was so great for its time, and it's still a classic, and it still stands the test of time. But this kind of took it, and did, like, everything good about it, and kind of, like, added more better things to it. And, you know, it's more modern and everything else, but... <clears throat> but, yeah, like I said, I haven't seen it for a while, cause I, so I can't say, you know, about all the characters and when they die off and stuff. I think that there's only a girl that survives in the end, and I think that she might just escape or something. But it's basically, if you've never seen them, it's like a group of kids going on a trip or something, and they somehow get led to this area where this, you know, messed up family is, and one of the family members has the chainsaw. He likes to kill people and wear their skin as a mask and hang them on meat hooks. He's, like, mentally disturbed. And um, the whole family is, like, psychotic. But basically, I don't remember, like, if the vehicle breaks down or something like that. Or maybe their vehicle gets sabotaged because they stop at a gas station or something. Something happens. I don't know. I guess, did it say Michael Day produced this? Let's go ahead and read the back of it, and then I'll talk more about some things that I remember. It says, prepare yourself for a level of fear like you've never experienced before. A group of friends take a detour while traveling through the back roads of Texas and encounter a chainsaw-wielding maniac. What happens next is beyond anyone's darkest imagination and will leave you speechless and horrified. From filmmaker Michael Bay and starring Jessica Biel comes this year's most hardcore and terrifying film, You've Been Warned. Yeah, this movie definitely left a scar on me, and I think this was around the time that I watched, you know, this came out in 2003, so it was around the same time as Cabin Fever and Dreamcatcher and The House of a Thousand Corpses, and I said, you know, I was really into movies and really into horror movies at that time, and I was watching a ton of them when I was like 18 or whatever, so many years ago. I was absorbing all of these, and this came out, and, you know, I rented it or whatever, I didn't see it in theaters, but pretty sure I so rented it or something said you want scary this is scary by somebody Marin's Osborne from UNP UPN TV but yeah this is horrifying and it is kind of emotionally it's kind of sad and depressing because like you want these characters to live and like you know I talked I did get to cover a nightmare on Elm Street during this I got to cover at least that Jason project that I didn't really like and, you know, I covered Child's Play, so I covered a lot of the slashers and stuff, a lot of the popular ones, and this, I think, is a major one, and so I'm glad that, you know, I got around to, to doing this. But yeah, it is, it's kind of depressing, um, and it's so, you know, it has that psychological terror thing, because... And what I was what I was getting ready to say was about Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. Like some of the kills in those movies are like cool because they're like stylish. You know, Freddy Krueger kills his victim in interesting ways and stuff. So 
you know, it's not funny or cool when people die in real life, you know, not even in movies, really, but, you know, they do it in ways to where it's like, wow, that was nasty, or, you know, whatever, that was, that was different, or whatever. And so, it's kind of like an, an action movie, in a sense, or something, because you're like, you know, it kind of like gets your blood pumping, like energetic, you know, but this movie, it's like horrifying and it's like sad and you're like, man, like, I don't, I don't know if I can watch this anymore because you see like people really suffering. This movie is really about like people suffering and okay. So one of the additions that I think was not in the original, I could be wrong, but I think they added it to this movie is, uh, the character that plays the role of a sheriff. And, you know, he's a, he's one of the family members, one of the crazy family members. He's not a sheriff, but he, like, killed a sheriff or something. So he has, like, the uniform, and he drives around in a cop car. And, like, he stops these kids. And he might sabotage him. I'm, I'm not sure if he sabotages the vehicle or what. But I want to look him up, and I should have looked him up prior to this, but oh well. We're just freestyling it. But he's the guy that's in a full metal jacket. And, um... I'll just look that up and just find the cast. But he's the guy that plays the sergeant, you know, the loudmouth sergeant, the drill sergeant, basically. And um, so he dresses up as the sheriff in this, and he's one of the major memorable parts of this movie, except for I don't remember exactly what all happens, but he basically, you know, psychologically messes with these people, and they look at him, like, as a cop, like, for help or whatever, and he's one of the psychos, and he really does some messed up stuff. But, um, where is he, uh, oh, okay, Arlie Ermy, Arlie Ermy. Okay, well, anyways, that's what he is, I guess, that's his name, R. Lee Ermey. But yeah, he does a fantastic job in this as being a messed up creep. <laughs> um, and he might get his com comeuppance in the movie, I don't remember if he does or not, but... So there's a lot of psychological stuff that happens with him at first. I don't know if he, like, kills somebody or breaks somebody's leg or something, and is laughing at him. But basically, there's the torment with him, but then Leatherface is the chainsaw-wielding maniac, and he, like, comes out of nowhere, and and it's horrifying, you know, with the chainsaw, and he's kind of got some size to him, so he's like a monster, and he's wearing that skin mask. And, you know, they say this is based on a true story, which is pretty stretched, I think, but I think it's based on Ed Gain, like the guy who killed people... <laughs> I don't know if he really killed people with chainsaw or what, but he was a murderer. I don't, I don't remember if he had, like, they found a bunch of bodies, like, under his floor or whatever. Because I know I might be confusing that with John Wayne Gacy. Maybe, like, he, maybe Ed Gain just kept their body parts or something. I don't remember. But there's a picture of one of the terrified. Maybe that's Jessica Biel. I don't know. Maybe she's the main lead. But yeah, you feel scared and sad for her because I was thinking it's not only like just the the chainsaw killer that's the scary part, but it's also just being isolated and like having nowhere to go and like no help because they're like stuck in this location, you know, where there's no help anywhere. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think he... Um, I think Leatherface hangs a guy on the meat hooks, like, before he's all the way dead, and, like, you see, like, the meat hooks go through his body and stuff, and it's like, man, it's sick. It's hard to watch. It is. But overall, I mean, yeah, it's an effective movie, and it made me want to see the original, and I was so surprised by how the original stood up on its own, really. Um, it's a classic. You know, both of them are, and they've made a name for themselves, and they deserve that, you know, to be in the horror, um, you know, in the top horror films. There's not really much to show or say here. I guess it shows the house, basically, is where the family lives and stuff, and where Leatherface is, and where he hangs the bodies in there. 
there's some other characters in the family that are crazy, but I don't remember all the details of them. But yeah. I don't know what else to say, really. Need to watch it again. Oh, but it definitely stuck with me. Let's see if we can see some of the quotes, maybe. I'm just curious. Look up some more stuff on it real quick. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003. Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. So the critics gave this a 37 on Rotten Tomatoes, which is, like, terrible. That's unbelievable. No, this movie is pretty good. The audience scores a 58. I don't know why. Huh. Uh... Peter Travers from Rolling Stone, we've seen him on a lot of covers of the DVD. He gave it a bad rating. He said, all the bad rehash mojo from the Friday the 13th so the Blair Witch Project has infected Scott Kosar's script. Somebody said, it's horrible and explicitly violent, but never authentically scary. I think so. <clears throat> and somebody else that gave it a good review said it's R. Lee Emery of Full Metal Jacket fame who deserves the most credit for this remake, earning its mutilated thumbs up. I mean, yeah, he had an amazing part. <laughs> Someone said it's hard to do worse than this extremely gory mess. <laughs> yeah, it's bloody and it's nasty. Huh. Weird. I did not know that it was that not liked. Someone goes into a little bit, bit of detail about it. It says, Gritty and terrifying, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is an impressive remake that equals the original. When a hitchhiker commits suicide in the van of a group of college kids traveling through Texas, they end up stranded and are hunted by a psychopathic family. Yeah, I forgot about that. So that's another big scene in this movie where they pick up a girl who's, like, terrified. I think she's, like, shaking and scared. Like, she's already been, like, she's already found this family or whatever, and she's trying to escape, and they're, like, going towards them. And she's like, no, no. And, like, she has a gun or something, and she ends up, like, putting it in her mouth and blowing her brains out. So these kids are like, whoa, what the hell? But yeah, that's a creepy, intense moment, too. They end up stranded and are hunted by a psychopathic family intent on mayhem, starring Jessica Biel, R. Lee Emery, and Eric Balfour. The film has a solid cast. Additionally, the chases are incredibly suspenseful and intense. However, the violence is overly graphic, and the visual style is a bit grimy. Though the gratuity gets a little out of hand, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre still delivers a captivating and chilling horror film. I thought the grittiness and the, the gore of it was kind of what made it scary. Sheriff Hoyt was his name, I guess. In the, huh. One of the quotes is a woman says to the sheriff, what's wrong with you effing people? And he smiles, nothing wrong with us, nothing wrong with us. All right, guys. Well, I don't want to drag this out anymore, but if you haven't seen it, check it out. See what you think. I think it's worth watching. If you've seen the original, if you like it, or if you haven't seen either one of them, check out one of them. And I know there's sequels to both of them, and I don't think that the sequels are very good. I haven't seen them, but from what I've heard, they're not. So, just, uh, yeah. All right, that's going to be it. And I, 
am going to make myself watch a movie that I wanted to do for the final video, and we're going to do this, so we're going to end this Halloween with a bang, so, <laughs> alright guys, God bless.